Remember, we are talking about uh, trembling before. When trembling becomes a blessing. Praise the Lord. That's the mini series we're talking about. When trembling becomes a blessing. So we talked about trembling before God. Before the word of God. When the word of God. Yes. I will look upon, look with favor. The one who trembled at my word. So we looked at a couple of things. When, how do you know when someone, someone who is actually trembling at God's word? How do you know that you tremble at God's word? It's not physically trembling. We are talking about there are other ways that you can identify. You diagnose. Okay, one of the things that you will obey without delay. Amen. Amen. When you hear God speaking to you, you will obey without any delay. If you're not doing that, you're not trembling at God's word. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, the next thing is that sometimes it doesn't make sense. There are something God asks you to do that does not make sense. Sometimes the path to which God leads you does not make sense. Circumstances does not make sense. Praise God. We simply don't understand what God is doing. But you still obey. That is trembling before God's word. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Because God's word is very important. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You know, um, somebody actually sent me, uh, one of the families actually came from India. They were just visitors. He came to Suman, uh, Suja's home, their cousin. And uh, a, a friend uh, of mine, uh, whom I met actually many years ago in Muscat, and he was working at that time. Now today, uh, he has established a church in, in Cochin. Uh, very, very powerful uh, young person, very prayerful person. His name is Ronnie. Uh, I think his church name is House of Hope or something. Um, you know, he sent, he sent me a book. Uh, it's on kind of daily reading. It's uh, basically collections uh, from uh, A.W. Tosser, you know, different things. Um, that he talked about Trinity, about God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, different things and the writings of A.W. Tosser. So it's, it's like daily you read a small portion. And then he also sent me a map of the United States, a printed map, specially made. And he said, he said we are praying for the United States. And he also sent me $50, can you imagine, from India, somebody sending me money here. He said, back in the, there was a time when Americans sent missionaries around the world. He said, at time, pray that that time will come, Indian church will send missionaries to America and other places. I was touched by that. Just can you imagine a little church in, in Cochin, India, praying for our nation. They have a map. I don't know even if we have a map. They lay their hands on each of the states and pray. God, people of God, take up that challenge. Pray for this nation. Pray for Florida. Pray for all land of Florida. Amen. Amen. We need to start praying. Hallelujah. And then one of the readings that we came across is, you know, you know God, you know, um, he is the uncaused cause. We believe that everything has a cost, right? God made everything. Everything came from him. But God, who made God, is a big question people normally ask. He's the uncaused cause. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, sometimes you have no... And then God is also is omniscient. He knows everything. Perfect knowledge. God knows everything. The sad part is that we don't know everything. We probably know very little. That too we are confused. Isn't that right? Some of you have no idea what you're going to eat for lunch. If you're thinking about it. We are very limited in understanding. But God knows what he is doing. Amen. He is perfect. He is wise. 
Sometimes you wonder, God, what are you doing? It's so confusing. But even then, I will obey him. I will still obey him. Hallelujah. We also saw that when, you know, one of the signs of someone trembling at God's word is that sometimes you don't see a personal benefit in what you're asked to do. No personal benefit to you. I don't see any personal benefit from what God asked me to do. But still, you do it because God asked you to do it. But you will know that it will benefit you later. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's another aspect when we look at it is actually when one of the signs of trembling at God's word is actually you obey God even when it is painful. Even when it is painful. I will obey his word. I know this probably will bring me pain. But I will still obey God. Can I hear an amen? amen? We look at one verse of scripture. This is from Philippians chapter 2, verse number 12. It says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is... It's God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Amen. I don't want to pray for you all. 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 Well, he's, my, my focus is not this particular verse, but yes, it is God who works in you both to will and to work. You can't take a credit for anything. You can say, I did something. Even for the desire that is forming inside of your heart, you don't take credit for it. It is God who puts it there. Amen. Amen. So this words, don't be misled by these words. Don't get the understanding that you have to work out, you have to do something for No, no, no. That's a different thing altogether. Because it's God has done it. It is through the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's not by works. Oh, it's not by works. It's by the grace of God. Hallelujah. It's by the grace of God we are saved. But the Lord wants you to live in reverence, in the fear of God, trembling all the time. So it says, uh, let me not, not boast in anything. We, can we just sang now? Because it happens. We forget. We forget the fact that it is because of the death of Jesus Christ that we are who we are today. It's all because of the cross. Amen. Our, our attitude, that must be maintained. That reverence. Amen. That reverential fear, or we call it the holy fear of God, must be maintained all the time. Not one day, not two days, but throughout our life's journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But before he asks us, before Paul asking you, calling you to obedience, Paul is actually in that same chapter of the book of Philippians, Paul is actually... You know, pointing us to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's showing us. He's, he's, he's pointing us to the example Jesus has set for us. Into, look at verse number 8, chapter 2. 
He says he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Okay? Tanatan Orichu Veshatil Manishana Ibulangi Tanatan Dati Maranatholam Krushila Maranatholam Anisarana Ulavanai Tirno Jesus, the man Jesus who walked on this earth, he was obedient to the Father, even to the point of death on a cross like a criminal. Hallelujah. Having said that, he is asking us to work out your salvation because God already worked in you. Now you have to work the salvation that is inside of you to outside. Amen. Let people see it. Let it come out through your reverence, through your worship. Let it come out. Because Jesus has been the greatest example. He was obedient to the point of death. Hallelujah. This has not been an easy journey for Jesus, Anil, I want some more monitor here. Jesus has been for on a journey. Just, just imagine that Jesus went through. It was painful. The cross was painful. Some people get this idea that for Jesus, because he was God, it was easy for him to just go, put nails on me, man. Let me go. No, it was hard. I hope you, you know, you, I mentioned this so many times in this church here. There, there was a Japanese theologian by the name Kosuke Koyama. And this man had a book title just, just many years ago when I was a student, I came across it. He said, Cross Without a Handle. Because in Japan, in Tokyo, he saw all these people. Now, these days, people don't walk with briefcases, you know, because everybody has their phone. You know, every, but, you know there's all these uh, powerful people, they carry this briefcase, they walk, all the, it's a symbol of power. He said, Jesus' cross did not have an easy handle that he can hold, you know. Cross, man. A cross without a handle. It's really talking about the suffering Jesus faced. He had to carry that heavy cross. It was not an easy. Remember Matthew 26 verse number 39. Night before the crucifixion in the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus cried out in anguish. My father, if it is possible... Let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet, what I want, your will be done, not mine. Kalyum engel pidavi, ye panavatram, engel ninna, ningi pogate, engelum. There was a moment in the life of Jesus, just imagine, Jesus was seeing the suffering that, was, that he was about to face. The pain that he's going to be experiencing. Life of Jesus was real. He was not a phantom. Flesh and blood, pain, emotions. He saw it. He saw what is about to take place. The pain that is awaiting him. And he said, the Father, is there an alternative? I still wanted to have this redemption work done. But is there an alternative to, to, to the cross? But he said, not my will. The Father said, no son, that's the only way. That's the only way. Cross is the only way. Death is the only way. Not my will. But thy will be done. I know it's going to cost me pain. But I will obey my father. Your will is my desire. Hallelujah. 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 That was a conflict between obedience and self-preservation. Jesus was experiencing these two things. 
that was so intense on the one side, self-preservation, but on the other side is obedience to the Father. Look at that conflict, what Jesus was going through, the pain that he was experiencing deep inside. And the writer says that instead of, you know, through the sweat pores, it was not the sweat coming out, it was blood coming out. Can you imagine? Tande a Roma Kubangal could have one other way or Pella, where Pinabagaram wrecked them on one other. Hallelujah. Just imagine what Jesus was experiencing deep inside. But he said, I know it is pain, but Father, your will is what I want to obey. Your will is what I want to obey. Ninda Hiram than Chayin Gartawe, Ninda Wajanam than Kekin Gartawe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What motivated this kind of an obedience? It's a good question to ask. Even though one is said, Panaita, yes, you have prayer, picture, and the book of Hebrews gives us a little clue. Chapter number five, and turn to book, verse number seven. It says here, while Jesus was here on earth, he offered up, offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Sadi Jode, Kusudan, I hear Jeeva Galtana Maradle Chipan. Hallelujah. Because of his deep reverence, because of his holy fear, because of that holy reverence for the Father. That was the secret of obedience. It is my Father's will. Ninda Ishtama Pa, your will in my life. Maybe some of us sitting here, maybe going through a tough time. Maybe things are not panning out the way you want it to. And you are in confusion. Is this what I'm called? Is this the offer? Is this the best offer? I tell you something. When you signed up to follow Jesus, you said, whatever you ask me to do, I will follow you. Hallelujah. The cross before me, the world behind me. I'm not turning back. Hallelujah. Whatever my master asked me to do, I will do it. Can I hear an amen in the house of God here? And the day I will do it, oh God. Whatever you tell me. In the Ravala Namra Kayadi Chadan and a call, Sorgam Sando Shikinada, Namre Agatun, the Yotor Barain, Oriwa Kapa, and the Yanur Yendu Varanad, Yana the Cheyum God, I will do whatever you ask me to. Sometimes it does not make sense to me. Sometimes I don't understand. Sometimes it will bring me pain. But God, you are sovereign. You are all knowing God. You are my master. I'm your slave. God, I will do anything you ask me to do. I will follow you till the very end. Holy Spirit, help me to follow my God till the very end. Our son and Mary and the Karthavi, I'm going to follow you on. In the Sahai Kraman, I don't know the Pratana. Paya Pakirinimitam, because of his reverent fear for God, God answered him. God talked to him. And what was the answer God gave him? Because he cried out, That's my will. <laughs> Not the alternative. Hallelujah. He got the answer. What was the answer? This is my will. This is my will. Paul prayed for his infirmity to be gone. How many times? We are told like what? Three times, right? Yes. Three times. Paul, such a great man. Karavya, you three number, you are three, Kastapatur Manshan, would you prathana? 
This is a man, this is a missionary who, who laid his life, you know, he did everything what the master asked him to do. That time he preaches the gospel, get beaten up by the evening time, thrown into the prison, spend most of the night in the cold floor. And that man is crying out, to asking God three times the infirmity to be gone, the thorn in the flesh to be removed. He got the answer. But what was the answer? My grace is sufficient for you. My question to you and I is asked to this. Will you, be, will you be happy with that answer? Will you, be, will you be okay with that answer? That you will live the rest of your life with a thorn on the side? You have a choice here. Is a is the, is the thorn being removed better or having the grace of God better? Paul said grace is better. Hallelujah. And the kurban and the kumadi. Oh, and the shakin and the belly and the thing in your Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that's what the will of God is, I will receive it, Lord. Gladly I receive it. That's the kind of followers, disciples the Lord is looking for. I will gladly follow you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now Peter goes on a little further. He tells us as Christians, okay? In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 1, he says, So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, okay? This is New Living Translation. So then Christ suffered physical pain. You must arm yourself with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You and I are called to arm yourself, not with AK-47. Arm yourself with the same attitude. Christ suffered physical pain. You must arm yourself with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer. Ready to suffer. In this journey of yours, there's always pain. He never promised you. There will be no, he never said to you, it's all going to be rosy all the time, beautiful all the time. No. He said, you will have troubles in this world. But you be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. See, if you don't arm yourself with this, what happened? When you're hit with the trouble, you say, I'm done with this faith thing business. It's not, it doesn't work. It's not for me. Arm yourself with the same attitude that Christ had. What a beautiful Malayalam song that is. Lord, if it is your will that to destroy, then your will be done. That was your attitude, oh God. It's the same attitude that you need to arm yourself. Hallelujah. And the time will be I will see God with a renewed strength. Hallelujah. With a glorious body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's another face to this life. There's eternity that is waiting for me. Hallelujah. The world is not offering us anything glorious at this point. Though we are seated in heaven, we still go through troubles on earth. Our, our positioning is there, but practically things are a little different here. Hallelujah. Arm yourself. So Peter is just, arm, just instructing us to arm yourself. Just imagine that an army cannot go to war without arming. They need the guns. They need all of the things they need. 
But you see every day, you can, you can watch the internet and you can see the different kind of things people are using. You see Americans using now, in ship they're using powerful lasers. That can destroy anything that is really coming. It's very interesting to watch. This. So, now, the, the, even the war scenario is also changing today. But you should not go to war without arming yourself with the same attitude. Arm yourself with the same attitude and do not go on this journey without arming with this attitude. And what is the attitude? The fear of the Lord, what arms us. Hallelujah. It was what kept Jesus when he faced that, that, that pain in the Garden of Gethsemane. It was the fear, holy fear. It was Pakkadinimitam. It was because of his holy fear. Now you arm yourself with the same attitude Christ had. Hallelujah. Now, this is what the reason Paul goes on to say in Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. He says, it's been granted on behalf of Christ. Not to lead to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. I don't know how, who wants that varam. Praise God. Amen. Varam. That's a gift from the Lord. And they were suffer for the Lord. Kastan Saipan Lawadam. Gift of suffering for the Lord. If that is part of his plan. Would you still give thanks to God? Will you still praise him? He said, he is rejoicing. Hallelujah. Peter also wrote, for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Just as Christ suffered for you, he is your example, and you must follow his steps. He never sinned, never ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly, custom. That was the attitude of Jesus. He did not retaliate. He did not fight back. But he committed himself into the hands of God who judges properly. That's the attitude that you should arm yourself with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of Hebrews, as we, as we, as we continue to read the book of Hebrews, it really, especially in chapter 11, it lists heroes of faith. We call it the hall of faith. It really speaks about a lot of people who experience great victories through their faith. But in their obedience to God, what happened? Some of them were mocked. Some of them were chained. Some of them were tortured, abused, imprisoned. Some of them wandered in the desert, lived in caves and myriads of other uncomfortable or painful circumstances. Why? There's a big question about why. Hallelujah. The reason for this, they lived in a fallen world that is hostile to the kingdom of God. They were Ajatana Wala Vibirida Maitra Adonai Durpulla or Loga Tila Idanu Avarajiv Chirinada. Hallelujah. I want to read to you a couple of verses uh, from chapter eleven of the book of Hebrews. We we'll read from verse thirteen. Onwards, some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half, and others were killed with sword. 
Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitutes and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised them. In the midst of their suffering, pain, they followed God. That's what trembling, God's word really means. When it becomes inconvenient for us, will you just step aside and walk away from obeying God? If it is when you come into conflict between self-interest and the will of God, which one will you choose? There's a couple of people in the Gospels that come to my mind. You know, we spent some time, some, some months ago, we spoke something about, or we went through a series on Mary, the mother of Jesus, the little, you know, teenage peasant girl. Just imagine, very devout young lady. Imagine uh, the day when angel Gabriel came to her, visited her, and told her that God was about to make her this particular virgin, the mother of the Savior of the world, from the you know, Savior of the world, Mary's response was this. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. You know, just please don't Take this to mean that she was just naive. She had no idea what she was saying. She just saw the angel. She was just excited. But she had no idea what. No, no, she knew exactly what this would, this would lead her into. She was engaged to be married to a man called Joseph. And I told you, we, we, we went through that study. It takes a divorce to get out of this, now, this, this bond. You can't just walk away. It takes a divorce to walk away from this. She knows what it really means. And she knows the life of scandal that she will have to live the rest of her life. Just imagine your 14-year-old, 15-year-old come home and say, Oh, I have something in my stomach growing up, something here, and it is from God. You'll have a hard time believing it, right? Just imagine Mary going home and telling this to her mom. Just imagine what would happen in the village. She could be stoned to death. Had it not been for Joseph who was standing up for her, she could be stoned to death. Our color you look. Well, she may not have comprehended the ramifications of this decision, but she believed it is God who spoke to me. It is the angel of the Lord who is standing before me. I don't understand how things are going to turn out, but I'm going to submit to that and say, I am your servant. That is exactly the attitude, the response God is desiring from all of us. Whatever circumstances comes your way, God brings in your way. You and I should be able to turn and say, I am your servant, O oh God. Your will is what I want, O oh God. The other example may not be, may not perfectly fit, but I sometimes look at Hagar in the Old Testament with little sympathy. This is a servant of Sarai. You know that she later bore him a son. 
Abraham has a son called Ishmael. Just, just think about her for a moment. It was not her choice. She was just taking care of her mistress, taking care of Sarai. And all of one day, suddenly Sarai had an idea. If God cannot do this miracle, then I let me see if I can do something. They were thin up at the Langil, they won't change you in the Nun in Yano Rea in Arcono. So she decided to bring her Egyptian maid. He said, Go, spend time, sleep with my husband. That's what she just simply obeyed. She just simply obeyed. And then what happens? But she was mis mistreated. There could be a little reason there also. The Bible says that Avalon Dia Navarni. She started showing probably a little attitude. I don't know what attitude she was showing. Here. But for some reason, Sarai did not like it. I don't know if Sarai was going through something because, hey, look at now. She is pregnant. She is close to my husband now. What is going on now? You are the one who made this mess. And she tells her husband, and he said, ah, she's yours, do whatever you want to do. And he is, she said, send her away. Send her away with a child. Now, she goes through the wilderness, she's running through, she said, living in a wilderness is much better than staying in this home and being mistreated by her. After all, it was not my idea, it was her choice, she's the one who put me to this mess. Pesan nama orang itu kari memberi nanda, mari bumi ini pohon berdom. Hagar nak kanan ini kan dua dayu orang. God saw the cry of this woman. And then something very interesting happens is actually in chapter 16 verse 9. Awal ini kan awak ikut nanda. Okay, she 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 escaped. Anyway, she's gone. Now that God has another plan now for Hagar. That's my point here. So, the angel of the Lord comes and have a conversation with Hagar. I was just waiting to see if he say, okay, now take, take the little lad and then go somewhere else. I'll, I'll make sure I give you something so you can live the rest of your life. You don't. But the angel has a different idea. What's the idea here? Verse number 9, it says, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Oh boy, that's, that's not an easy thing. You were just disconnected from her. You thought this ordeal is over. Now God is telling you, return. Return to your husband. Sorry, return to the, your mistress. Submit to him. Submit to her. I don't know if she, she got into maybe an argument with, uh, with the angel of the Lord, but she did. I feel sympathy for her. She had no choice but to obey the angel of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Go submit yourself. So submit yourself to your husband. That is the will of God. But if God is speaking to you, you should do it. Submit to your parents. That's the will of God. And you, you reason and say, oh, but you don't understand. They, you, you have no idea. They are not reasonable people. Does not matter. If God speaks to you, do it. I know, I know amen won't come now. Most difficult things sometimes Holy Spirit asks you to do. Pastor, you have no idea. I cannot deal with my brother-in-law. He's so bad. You have no idea. Go submit. My boss is so supervisor. You have no idea that woman. She is so bad. But God tells you, go submit. I'm going to let this cup pass. 
വേറെ വഴി ഉണ്ടോ കർത്താവ് ഈ പാന മാത്രമല്ലാതെ വേറെ ഏതെങ്കിലും ദാറ്റ്സ് ഈസ് നോ ദാറ്റ് കപ്പ് യു ഷുഡ് ഡ്രിങ്ക് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് മൈ വിൽ നമ്മളെ പലരെയും തമ്പുരാൻ ഓടിച്ചും മര്യാദയ്ക്കാക്കുന്നത് ഇതുപോലെയുള്ള സൂപ്പർവൈസേഴ്സാണ് അവർക്കായി സ്തോത്രം ഇതുപോലെ ഇതുപോലെ ഹാർഡായിട്ടുള്ള ഭർത്താവിനെ തന്നായിരിക്കും നമ്മളെ ഒതുക്കുന്നത് അതിനായി സ്തോത്രം ഇതുപോലെയുള്ള അനുസരണം കുറഞ്ഞ ഭാര്യയെ തന്നിട്ടായിരിക്കും നമ്മളെ തമ്പുരാൻ ഒരുക്കുന്നത് അവർക്കായിട്ട് സ്തോത്രം ഒന്നും പറഞ്ഞാൽ കേൾക്കാത്ത രണ്ട് പിള്ളേരെ തന്നിട്ടായിരിക്കും തയ്യാ നമ്മളെ ശരിയാക്കുന്നത് അതോടുകൂടി ഇനി ആരെ കുറ്റം പറയത്തുള്ളൂ യു ഓൺ നൗ ഗോസിബ് അബൌട്ട് എനിബഡി സ്കേറ്റ്സ് നൗ യു ഗാഡ് കപ്പിൾ ദാം നൗ യു ലേൺ യുവർ ലെസൺ ഇൻ എ നൈസ് വേ ഗോഡ് ഈസ് ഗുഡ് ഓൾ ദ ടൈം ആൻഡ് ഗോഡ് ഈസ് റിയലി ഗുഡ് നമ്മളെയൊക്കെ ഓരോരുത്തരെ എന്തെല്ലാം പഠിപ്പിച്ചിരിക്കുക ശരിയല്ലയോ ഇപ്പോൾ ഒന്നും പറയത്തില്ല നമ്മളാരും എന്താ പറയാനാപ്പാ എന്താ പറയാനാപ്പാ ഹൗ വാട്ട് ക്യാൻ വി സേ വാട്ട് ക്യാൻ വി സേ വെൻ തിങ്സ് ബിക്കം പെയിൻഫുൾ ഐ വിൽ സ്റ്റിൽ ഒബൈ ബട്ട് ഇൻ ഓൾ ദീസ് പീപ്പിൾ ഐ സേ ദിസ് വൺ വി വിൽ ക്ലോസ് ദിസ് പാർട്ട് ഹിയർ ദ ഓൾ ഹാഡ് സംതിങ് ഇൻ കോമൺ ഇവരെ എല്ലാവരും എടുത്തു നോക്കി വെദർ ഇറ്റ്സ് മേരി വെദർ ഇറ്റ്സ് ഹേഗർ ഓ ഹു എവർ ഇറ്റ് മേ ബി ദ ഹാഡ് സംതിങ് ഇൻ കോമൺ ദ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റഡ് സംതിങ് ഫ്രം സാംസ് വൺ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് ട്വൻറ്റി സിക്സ് വേഴ്സ് നമ്പർ ഫൈവ് ദോസ് ഹു പ്ലാൻഡ് ഇൻ ടിയേഴ്സ് വിൽ ഹാർവസ്റ്റ് വിത്ത് ഷൗട്ട്സ് ഓഫ് ജോയ് ദ സിങ് ആസ് ദ റിട്ടേൺ വിത്ത് ഹാർവസ്റ്റ് കണ്ണുനീരോട് വിതയ്ക്കുന്നവർ ആർപ്പോട് കൊയ്യും വിത്ത് ചുമന്നും കരഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് വിതച്ചു നടക്കുന്നു കറ്റ ചുമന്നുകൊണ്ട് ആർത്തുകൊണ്ട് വരുന്നു ഹാലലൂയ Hallelujah you may be doing obedience with tears it may be bringing pain to you but a day is going to come when you are going to experience the blessings of God God is looking for people who will obey him even in the most difficult things etta muthumulla samayathum kannadiru mathram vaakiyulla polum it's bring me pain that it's my lord ask me to do ende karthavu എന്നോട് പറഞ്ഞതുകൊണ്ട് ഐ എം ഗോ ആം മൈ സെൽഫ് വിത്ത് ദ ഹോളി ഫിയർ എൻ്റെ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ അതേ ആയി ദം സെയിം ആറ്റിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ഐ എം ഗോയിൻ ടു ഹാവ് യു നോ പീപ്പിൾ ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ഹൗ മെനി ടൈംസ് ഗോഡ് ഹാവ് ടു സ്പീക്ക് ടു യു എവറി ടൈം യു റീഡ് ബൈബിൾ ഗോഡ് ഈസ് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് ടു യു ആണോ അല്ലയോ ജസ്റ്റ് ആസ് യു സെൽഫ് me and shaila you know we are celebrating 37 years of marriage but i can tell you our life was never perfect we had so much of arguments i don't know how many times she wish i had never married this guy i'm just telling you these things all of you each of you can say that about yourself it has not been all rosy road we had difficulties but i tell you something We come back to this book. Amen. We come back to this book. This is what God tells you. Come submit yourself. Confess to one another. Love your neighbor. Ningale etto the neighbor are who is your closest neighbor? Your wife, your husband. Apple etto at the neighbor. Love your neighbor. Has yes sir. We are looking at the other house. No, his neighbor is in your house. We did then one neighbor. Apple neighbor la apra varam indra thralamai. It is said there are people there are pentecostals who live in two different rooms rande room la amsikade unless she has a contagious disease you shouldn't do that can i hear an amen or if you are talking about you can not talk to each other for days you cannot do the bible says do not let the sun go down when you are still angry then the kovathil me surya rastamikkerudu don't be angry you cannot go on forever that is god speaking to you will you obey will you go to him i'm sorry but i didn't do anything why should i ask him sorry blessed are the peacemakers they shall be called the sons of god samadhan undakkunavar bhagyanmar avar devathinte putranmar endu vilikkapadum hallelujah i salute every couple every every person here every husband and wife who take the first step in asking forgiveness i salute you you are definitely on the highway that is trembling at god's word adana devathu varake varakan kaathirikku endu maathram varakan avasaram theyunnu ദൈവത്തെ ഉറപ്പിക്കുക നമ്മൾ 
submit. Amen. You bring your offering to the altar. On your way, you remember your brother has something against. Brother, I live in the world. Your wife has something against you. Your husband has something against you. Don't bring that offering. I don't need that prayer. I don't need that singing. And pastor, I don't need that preaching that day. Do you remember? First go reconcile. Remember, we don't have to be able to do it. We need to have you. Our, our home is heaven's embassy because you're the ambassador. You are the ambassador. Your home is heaven's embassy. Hallelujah. Wherever it is, that embassy reflects. United, United States has an embassy in India, Delhi, in other places. That place is United States. Amen. Ada America, you are here on earth. You are supposed to represent heaven. Your home is heaven. Let your children taste a little bit of heaven in your home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did you learn in the world? Just one thought in your heart today. How do you know you tremble at God's word? What we looked at today was, even if it becomes painful, God, I will obey you. The reason why I do this is because my Lord Jesus, when he was on this earth, he was experiencing that pain for you. He was experiencing the pain to a point where blood drops were coming through the pores because of the tension between self-preservation and the will of God. Jesus chose to do the will of God. Peter says, arm yourself with the same attitude. Arm yourself. The same attitude. What a privilege it is to suffer for the Lord. If that is the will of God. God is looking for people who will tell Father, whatever you tell me, I will obey. I want to tell you something. This is uh, uh, something very recently, just a couple of days ago, a story. I was talking to a young girl. She's, she's here actually on a student visa in the United States. She's a Hindu. But very recently she came to know Christ. Fresh in faith. You know, she's not baptized or anything. She said, even when, I don't know why, she said, Pastor, when, even sometimes when I was going to the temple, I'm going, I'm actually worship, supposed to worship, I'm worshiping, but I'm praying. Even in the temple, I'm praying, Jesus, I love you. She said, I don't know how this happens. I'm in the middle of a temple, but my prayers are going to. And now she's a new Christian. I mean, she has come to you. She's a new Christian. She told me something. He asked me a question. But there's one Young man that I love for the last eight years, my childhood friend. I love him so much and he loves me so much. I believe that you should have only one person. She's what she said. I should, you should have only one relationship, should not have multiple relationships, and you should marry that person you love. And this is a person I truly love. He said, but now they tell me, or someone tell me, you can't marry him. Because of Jesus, she was tearing. I was standing there stunned. He said, on the one side, I love Jesus. But on the other side, here is somebody that I love. Pastor, what do you say? I can't say no to him. But at the same time, Christ is here. I said, you're not married yet, you're not, in, you know, the engagement is not yet, you are there. But can you, I said, why don't you start asking Jesus to touch his life? The way God touched your heart, God can touch his heart. She was not a Christian dating a Hindu. They both were Hindus. I'm not talking about some Pentecostal going out with Hindu girls and saying, Pastor, pray for the... That's, that's called missionary marriage. I'm not talking about that. 
You can forget about that. Don't yoke yourself with an unbeliever. A born again Pentecostal boy or girl should not, never, never think about marrying, though she is a Christian, whatever it is, not a born again person, never marry them. Simple as that. So anyway, I said, yes, why don't you ask? She, she, her eyes are bright and you have no idea. Her eyes, Can I really say that to Jesus? I said, yes. Why don't you tell that to Jesus to touch his life? He says, from today onwards, I'm going to tell Jesus that he would touch his life too. Sometimes your obedience sometimes can be very painful. I saw that. It can be very painful. Would you still honor God with your decision? The reason why I do this, the ultimate obedience to Jesus Christ is because he died on the cross. May I never forget Calvary. May I never forget Jesus. Never forget the shed blood on the cross. And that's what we are exactly going to do today. Jesus said, you do this in remembrance of me. And this today, as you take the bread and this thing in your hand, you tell Jesus, Jesus, I will obey. Even when it becomes painful, I will obey. Anything that is contrary to your word, I will choose to obey you, Lord Jesus. I'll say no to that and ask to you. Would you close your eyes for a moment of prayer?